Ah, that's more than just a bad hair day. Hi and welcome to my playhouse. And today we're gonna be talking about some hardware. Because I from time to time get good questions. I wanna get into servers, where do I start? And uh, it's a very difficult question because people are from all over the world, uh, mostly English speaking countries, funny enough, um, or countries where English is the second language. But everybody is in their own situation and one suggestion does not go for someone else because, well, many of the servers that I have are rather noisy. So uh, yeah, I need a data center or somewhere away from the house where they are not bothering anyone like this noise in the background would drive a lot of moms or partners insane incompatible family members or girlfriends mostly girlfriends <laughs> so i'm just gonna be throwing around some general stuff that i think but just because i think it doesn't mean that it's 100 percent correct so I very much encourage you to go in the comments below and tell me when you agree and when you disagree in a nice way of course but um, if you want to get into servers where do you start? Well if you follow my channel you will know that I'm a big Lenovo fan and uh, used to be IBM but now IBM doesn't make servers anymore so now it's, uh, it's Lenovo servers but it used to be IBM servers so if you want to get into servers and want to start somewhere where you're not getting ripped off I would go with something like the System X 3650 Model 3 this is an older server that has cables in it and you can get quite a lot of power in this server and it's not very expensive at the present time so um, it's a 2U server it has room for two CPUs, one here and one over here. Uh, we can probably remove this plastic. There, this is the Model 3, so it has room for 18 blocks of memory. And these are the Intel Xeon 5600 series, and they are very affordable right now. So you can get a server and you can upgrade it to the best possible CPUs. And it won't and it won't ruin you that always depends on your situation and what country you're in but compared to new stuff they are affordable it has two uh, power supplies so it's a real enterprise server and it has the uh, the IMM the integrated management module which is an, an extra network port on the back of the server that you can connect to and it gives you a web interface or a command shell where you can control what the server is doing not what the operating system on the server is doing, but you can power the server on and off, see power usage, see log files, so a management thing. And actually this dongle that is in here, this blue thing, that's, uh, that gives you even more capabilities so you can remote console into the server and you can take over a console of the operating system and you can, well, you can install an operating system on this server from 5,000 kilometers away or closer or longer no problem this server is equipped with uh, with riser cards uh, there are x16 riser cards available they are rare as heck so um, yeah what you can do is remove the end of the x8 here and then have the GPU sticking out over the ends so if you have a GPU like this one you would just remove the plastic so that it would stick out like that and most GPUs will actually work that way I have no idea if this one does I have not tested that but with the server you can put in four PCI Express uh, ports there is a daughter board available so you can have um, additional 1G connections on the back there is already two 1G connections in the server and it with PCI Express ports you can put in 10 gigabit Ethernet cards in here no problem whatsoever CPUs I said that they are fairly quick 
the big downfall of this server is that compared to today's standards it uses a lot of power the the performance you get here is rather cheap but you pay again because it uses more power so that is definitely something to take into consideration when you're buying an enterprise server they are usually prioritized for secure and safe operation more than power consumption so it's more important that the server is is stable and always up and don't go down and don't crashes and so on and so forth then saving every watt um, so there is something to be said for that so if you want a 24 7 server um, you have to be careful what to put in this server there is low power CPUs available and also in that case you want some larger RAM blocks these are actually not bad I think they're 16 gigabyte blocks let's let's check one these are actually from a hewlett packard i see a hewlett packard ram so that's something that you can do with a lenovo server you can put in different ram yeah 16 gigabyte blocks fairly quick ram uh, ddr3 which is also very affordable now so this is the server that i would suggest to get into servers on the cheap um, of course, cheaper is available. So this X3650 Model 3 is from 2010. So it's an older server for sure, 12 years. This is pretty old for uh, IT equipment. If, um, if you need something even cheaper, well, there is the Model 2. And that is from about, this one is also from about 2010 but it has a few limitations compared to the model 3 the model 2 can only take cpus up to 95 watts tdp and it has two less ram slots in there so it takes um, 32 gigabytes of ram less than the model 3 the model 3 here takes 288 gigabytes where the model 2 takes 256 gigabytes even older again I up here have the Model 1. I do not recommend this anymore. It, um, it's a tank. It's, it, I'm not gonna say that it's impossible to kill it, but it's definitely very hard. And, and these servers are from about 2007-ish. So they are rather old. I'm a bit astonished that this one was from 2010. And this one is too. So. Apparently the Model 2 and the Model 3 was available at the same time. They can also use the same generation of processors. When this one came out, it was using the Intel Xeon 5500 series. And when the Model 3 came, that could do the 5600 model of CPUs. But with a firmware upgrade of the Model 2, you were able to do most of the 5600 CPUs except the ones that was using more than 95 watts. The Model 2 here with the Intel Xeon 5500 series was a uh, server that was very popular with virtualization. This was when VMware was brand new. So um, this server was widely used. You could put a lot of RAM in here and you could run a lot of virtual machines on here and the CPUs was the first to have hyperfretting, the 5500 series. Well, they, actually it was not, but it was the first more widely available server that used hyperfretting. Hyperfretting was available in some older CPUs, two cores, and then they would be four cores. These had four cores and with hyperfretting they could be eight cores, and with the 5600 series, they could even do six cores, and with hyperfretting, they could do 12 cores, uh, virtual cores. So very much used for virtualization. This also meant that with the move-in of virtualization, you suddenly didn't need as many servers in your data center. So where the Model 1 here, you had to buy a lot of servers. With the Model 2, you had to buy less servers, which meant that, well, these you could get used very cheaply these became more expensive now they're not but now we are 12 years later and there's not much hardware that costs much after 12 years but they have not been as widely available on the used market as the other ones so with the model trees here 
even less servers was needed because of, well, a little bit more memory and the, the more cores in there. And on a server like this, you can really run a lot of virtual machines. If you just have a lot of virtual machines that is most of the time just sitting around doing nothing, you could stack a lot of virtual machines on a server like this, no problem. So you didn't need as many physical machines. After this one, the Model 4 arrived. Um, it's down. I have one here and I have one there. So let's see if this one will, will come out. So this Model 4 is from 2014, so it's newer. And as you can see, I've been messing around with putting a graphics card in this one. And that was one of the benefits of this server. It was possible to put GPUs in the Model 2 and in the Model 3, but the riser cards was very difficult to get, but in the Model 4, they were widely available. So in this one, we have a Gigabit GeForce something. I forget what this card is. I guess we have to look now that... Uh, do we? Okay. I think it's a 1660 or something. I forget. That is more possible in the Model 4. The Model 4 is a more expensive server still. 2014 so this server is eight years old the prices are definitely coming down so you can be very lucky and get one of these servers for an, for a good price but most of the time you'll have to cough up more money uh, it has a uh, 24 dim slots in here so it can take quite a bit more memory and it uses the next generation of the intel xeon processors and those were the e5 2600 and this can do version v1 and v2 of those cpus yeah if you can get your hands on one of these servers i would highly recommend that but it does have a hardware bug some voltage regulators in it so if you get one make sure that it's running the latest firmware because they fixed a hardware bug and uh, they did that with firmware so there are some small um, tiny processing things on the motherboard that that burn out over time and they fix that with the firmware make sure to firmware update it as soon as possible if you get one of these as the other servers come standard with the option of two power supplies some of the server just has one power supply but you can always put the second one in there it is prepared for that this one actually only has one power supply so it has a it has a blinder thing here for the other power supply that saves a little bit of power. When you're running from two power supplies, it, it costs a little bit more of power because there is some overhead, but of course you have the two power supplies for security. But if you're just gonna play around with a server like this, there's no reason to use both power supplies. It will save you a bit of power to only run off one power supply. This server runs with the same DDR3 RAM as the previous versions. So you don't have to uh, have special RAM for this one. And also the drive caddies are the same as the previous version. So uh, drives and stuff uses the same caddies for the Model 4 as for the Model 2 and the Model 3. So that is neat. Um, has other fans and stuff and weird plastic here. So This is still a good server to um, to play around with it's um, well the processors in this server can also be expensive power wise but really the Intel Xeon processors well they are just power hungry the next server that I have which is still expensive is the x3650 model 5 it says it over here system x3650 m5 so this is um, still pretty expensive I forget if it says how old this this my server here is from 2018 so it's uh, four years old so they are starting to come out of production 
and uh, into the used market and I don't think there is many of these out there so to get one of these uh, first you have to be lucky and then but many of them will be highly overpriced to start with then on top of that these are my two newest servers I, I bought this and then I bought this one when that was available uh, well, when it was available at a price that I uh, thought that I could pay so this one is 2019 so I probably got this a bit late and then I got this one uh, more early so this is already three years old and I do believe that uh, this is coming out of warranty this year so uh, yeah this one uh, came out of warranty late last year and this one is coming out of warranty late this year this one is still widely in production I know where I work I buy five years of warranty with this server when I purchase it so it will be a little bit before you can get your hands on this for on the cheap uh, except if you're very lucky and someone don't know what they are dealing with so indeed if you can get one of these for your home lab you have done a really good deal the M5 here uses the Intel Xeon E5 26 version 3 and 4 so the later two of those CPUs where the Lenovo SR650 I forgot to say the name of this one did I <laughs> yeah that uses the first generation of the Intel scalable CPUs and they are also not very available funny enough sometimes when you have a brand new server like this and there is not much of a market for the CPUs for it because not a lot of private people has the the finances to go and purchase something like this well the spare parts for it like CPUs might be very cheap for a while because um, if you're a company and you buy this and you figure out that the CPUs that you got wasn't the right ones and you want to get some new ones there's not a market for the old CPUs yet because that will change of course so I do not have the newest version of the servers anymore there is now an SR650 version 2 and I haven't gotten around to get that one yet so <laughs> and also there is the AMD EPIC CPU uh, servers available and uh, yeah what I've told you here is it applies to enterprise servers rack mountable so yeah you need a you need a rack or an IKEA cabinet or something <laughs> I've seen very inventive solution there but of course tower servers is available and well over here we have we have blade servers they are also available I wouldn't really recommend that for a home user they are overkill they well it's it's along the way if you're really into servers it's okay to get a blade bunch of blades and just play around with it when um, time is to that sort but it's definitely not a 24 7 thing because it will suck your wallet dry through the electric bill kind of the same thing applies to the other brands Hewlett Packard has their DL 380 series which is pretty much the same thing as the Lenovo ones they have kind of exactly the same lineup of servers and they change every time Intel comes out with a new CPU and they can do kind of the same thing and Dell is the same thing as well the other ones eh, I would very much like to know what home lab server you're running in the comments below and when you are finding your way down there you you pass this like thing I would very much encourage you to give that a hit it, it helps somehow <laughs> Playing around with servers is a nice hobby. It can be very expensive, but it doesn't have to be. So thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.